Hello, my name is Ian Fellows, and today I'm going to talk to you about a shiny user interface for multiple source capture recapture models um, called Shiny Recap. So the first thing that you may want to do is to take a look at the GitHub um, pages page for this, which contains a lot of information on documentation about the things that I'm going to be going over today. Um, and you can get to this by felstat.github.io forward slash shiny recap. And um, in this, you can go ahead and see that what you'll need to do for this, this is an R package, so you'll need to install it. And the installation instructions are uh, very easy. They're right here, and you can just copy and paste them into your, um, into your R Studio or R um, instance. Now, to launch the application, there's actually two applications within this, uh, within this package. Uh, the first is uh, for the analysis of capture recapture, and the second is for a power analysis to help you plan studies around capture recapture. And to do this, uh, we just go ahead and um, load the library and uh, click Launch Shiny Pop Size. And that goes ahead and launches the application. We uh, begin it with uh, some overview and a bit of instructions. Um, but uh, the first thing that we can do is load in our data. Now the data that we're gonna be using today is for um, the survey of injection or multiple source survey of injection drug users in Brighton. Um, and uh, I'll link to uh, the source of this data um, in, the, uh, in, the, in the description. So what we've got here is we've got um, uh, a bunch of different um, files here. They're all CSV files, so comma separated files. And these are totals. And also we've broken this down by, by age and by um, gender as well. Uh, in these different files. So let's just go ahead and open the, the total file. The format that Shiny Recap uh, requests is that um, you have each of your capture events listed in a column. And uh, it's a one if uh, this history um, is, is a capture for that event. So this uh, history right here is captured in the first, captured in the second, captured in the third, captured in the fourth. Now this one is captured in the first, the second, the third, but not the fourth. And optionally, you can have um, uh, the last column be a total of the number of individuals uh, with that capture history. So here we see that there was one individual who was captured in all four uh, capture events and eight individuals who were captured in the first three, but not in the last one. Now all the important things here um, happen in the analysis, but it's important to get in your data correctly. Um, and uh, you can uh, do different types of commas. We, we have a comma separated here, but we can also do semicolon separated, tab separated, space separated, and also whether we've got a header with column names or not. Um, but all of the important stuff happens in the analysis. Now there's uh, a couple different types of models that are supported here. Uh, we've got classical log linear models for multiple source capture recapture. We've also got Bayesian model averaging um, we've also got a Bayesian latent class. And for diagnostic persons, purposes, we have a pairwise analysis as well. And this basically says um, the, uh, if we were only considering two of the capture events, what would our population size estimates be? And what you want to look at these from a diagnostic standpoint is, are these all sort of consistent or near one another? Um, and we see for a lot of them, they're about the same, 1,500, 1,600, 1,700. Uh, but two of them are quite low compared to compared to the other ones. Okay, so in your log linear models, um, there's uh, quite a, quite a bunch of different models that we can do. Uh, but there's three there's three main classes. Uh, the first is M0, and this assumes that um, basically all captures have the same probability of capturing an individual, and there's no heterogeneity of prob of capture probability within the individual. Um, this is relaxed by the MT, which allows for uh, captures to have different probabilities, uh, but each individual has to have the same probability of being captured. Then uh, we have the MH, uh, which um, uh, allows for heterogeneity, individual level heterogeneity, but the overall capture probability has to remain constant across the different capture events. Finally, we've got the MTH, uh, which allows for both individual level heterogeneity 
and um, uh, heterogeneity over or uh, uh, different probabilities per capture event. Now, one of the important things around these capture recapture models is that we do often expect that there is individual level heterogeneity. And this can be handled by, uh, by the model um, with these heterogeneity parameters, but often that um, leads to very large uncertainty estimates. And also it's very difficult to figure out which of the potential forms of heterogeneity uh, it's possible to have. Here we have uh, uh, five different forms that we can have. We have a lower bound, um, the Chow lower bound, so this will give you generally an underestimate. Um, and then also we've got Poisson, De Roche, gamma, and normal. Uh, these are all different functional forms for the types of heterogeneity that are present among your among your population. Um, and so, ideally, what you want is to um, uh, not be in a case where there's heterogeneity, but sometimes that's unavoidable. Now, how do you choose between these models? Uh, oftentimes, the AIC, Akeiki's information criteria, or BIC, the Bayesian information criteria, is best. Uh, today we're just going to take a look at the Bayesian information criteria, which tends to um, be uh, uh, more conservative. It tends to lean towards uh, simpler models, so less uh, inclined to uh, have complexity in it. Um, and we see here that the, or, and the lower numbers are better here. So um, our MT model, which is just time level heterogeneity, or time level, uh, no individual level heterogeneity, but uh, heterogen or different captures can have different probabilities is 116 and uh, some of the MTHs are a bit lower than that. Um, we can go ahead and look at the Bayesian model averaging. Now what this does is it um, uh, it accounts for something other than heterogeneity. What it accounts for is the likelihood um, that two uh, two, two or more of your capture events are related to one another. So for instance, if you had one survey or two of your surveys uh, sort of tended to cover a single part of your city that you're surveying and one of them more uniformly covered around the city, uh, then you would expect that, uh, that two of them would be sort of highly related uh, and then the third one would be, um, would be different. Um, and we can go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, and this is a Bayesian model and it's got a couple different uh, parameters that we can set for our prior. This delta here controls the degree to which we expect to see large interactions between our, um, uh, our, different, uh, our different capture. Like how, are they all interrelated in a very complicated way or are they more likely to be independent? Uh, this is set um, to be two over the number or, or is set to a, a default prior which is um, uh, usually pretty good. Additionally, we want a prior on the population size. Um, by default, we use a non-informative prior here, uh, but we can also choose to, to do an informative prior and specify um, the different, uh, the diff the, our prior belief about what the population size is. And you should definitely do that if you're, if, if you're actually in the field because this will give you, uh, because we generally do have some information about uh, what the population size is before we even begin um, doing the study. But for, for here, we'll use the non-informative prior. Now, the posterior distribution will give you the probability distribution of your, um, of your uh, population size given uh, the data that we see. I'm gonna take just a few seconds to, um, uh, to calculate here, and we'll go ahead and wait for it. Okay, so we get two things out of this. First, we get a posterior summary. Um, so we get the mean, uh, 1,633 is the estimate of the population size for IDU and Brighton. And we also get a posterior distribution. Now these are, uh, this is the solid line here is the overall distribution for population size. And uh, these dotted lines here show the different contributions of uh, the various interactions that are, that are, that are possible. We can go ahead and take a look at those uh, over here in the posterior model probabilities. And these basically will tell you what types of interactions uh, this, uh, this methodology thinks are present in your data. 
and it thinks that there's a fairly high chance that they're all independent. So uh, a vertical bar means independent. So one is independent of two, is independent of three, is independent of four. So all the captures are independent. And um, that uh, has a probability of, of 31 of being correct, 31%. Uh, uh, However, there's also a lot of, um, a lot of uh, uh, math being put on the one and two being independent, but three and four being related. Uh, with 46.77% um, probability. And so that gives you an idea of, of, of basically the things that are underlying it. Now, what, uh, a methodology that, that incorporates both is the Bayesian latent class um, model. And what this does is um, it models uh, the probability, that assumes that there are some groups uh, that exist in your data that you don't see and that these groups are, have different likelihoods of being captured at each capture event. And the number of those groups is actually determined by, uh, by this, this modeling methodology, um, along with the probabilities that they get captured in each, um, in each uh, event. So uh, what we can go ahead and do is click run, and this will run this model, um, and it will give us some posterior summaries. So we see 1,600 here. Uh, very similar to the Bayesian model averaging approach. Um, and uh, if we look at diagnostics, it's important to look at diagnostics for this method because uh, it is rather computationally complex. What we want to see here is uh, very noisy, just nothing going on here, just ups and downs, nothing, no trends in the beginning, and you know doesn't look like jagged lines. Um, and what we see is that we, when calculating this posterior distribution, this mean here, is basically the average of um, 886, uh, a sample size of 886. If we want to up that, um, uh, up our accuracy of this, of this mean here, we can either increase the number of samples or increase this thinning parameter. Okay, so, um, so both the Bayesian model averaging and the latent class sort of agree at, at, at around 16, 1600 or so. Um, the, uh, the the log linear models uh, show for the um, for heterogeneity uh, time varying heterogeneity um, we see everything from 1700 to to 3400 uh, which is um, and, and and the the um, the BICs are all very close so um, we have some worry about that and what we can do when we do have that is to go ahead and break it down and uh, look at subcomponents, subpopulations that um, are more likely or less likely to be, be captured and then, and then break it down by those subpopulations. And then it'll generally be, uh, the goal is to have it be, um, have there be literal, little heterogeneity within that subpopulation. So an example, if we look at female um, injection drug users, uh, go ahead and load that in and do our analysis. Uh, we see that um, uh, that the MT model has the lowest um, the lowest uh, um, the lowest BIC, um, and so we can go ahead and start to like combine these together. So that has an estimated population size of fifty one uh, five hundred and forty one point three three. And then if we go ahead and look at males and look at the analysis, well, uh, it's close to the lowest, but it does, it's not quite the lowest um, uh, BIC. So let's go ahead and even go down further and we'll bring it down to, to break it down by age. So we're gonna look at 15 to 29 year olds first and then 30 to, 30 to 44 year olds. So let's take a look at the 15 to 29 year olds. Um, here, now we see a BIC that's pretty low and um, uh, population size estimate of 419. And, and let's do the older males as well. Here we see uh, that the MT model has the lowest BIC and uh, 722, and so 
uh, we see that uh, um, uh, that we're we're getting pretty close here. Um, and so the some of these, right, the women, the younger men, the older men, uh, that's going to lead all. That's gonna, that's the total population. So if we look at our population size estimate. Um, uh, we can go ahead, I'll cancel out that, and then look at our population size estimate, uh, 1,683. So very, very close to um, uh, the other methodologies using the, the total data. Um, again, you know, if there's a lot of heterogeneity, it's really a good, there was a modest amount in this, in, this, uh, in this data set, but if there's a lot of heterogeneity, I highly recommend uh, breaking it down, um, but we do have methodologies that will, um, will help with that. So uh, as I said before, uh, go ahead and check out the uh, manual on the GitHub page um, uh, outlined right here. And uh, yeah, I hope you uh, have an enjoyment out of it and uh, feel free to contribute or, um, uh, or provide issues and bug reports on our development page. Thank you.